Hi, I'm Joseph Kern, Instruction Designer at Emporia State University. In this video, I'm going to be talking about iPhoto's projects page and the types of things you can make. So hitting the plus at the bottom, you can make a web journal, a slideshow, or a photo book. Uh, real quickly, I'm not going to go deeply into the photo book on here because most people don't use it because you can make a book and then you have to buy it and they'll print it and you can actually get a real book that you can hold in your hands and flip through like it's the 1800s or something. But you pick your style, you tell it to create a book, and then you can tap on a page, double tap it, and you can select different layouts. So we can pick there. And so every photo I can just tap and fill in with something, then I can tap on the text and write stuff and make a book and then print it for $24.99. But I don't want that, so I'm just going to tap and hold on there and delete it. What I do want to make is a web journal. When it opens up, it automatically wants you to start adding some stuff, so we can tap on photo, bring in a photo of something. We can tap on any of the items and stretch them out make them bigger or wider and it automatically starts to crop things based off of how wide you put it. I could just tap at the top or any text box to be able to edit things. Some of the text options are just different chunks of text so there's header which they have at top. I could tap on text and I can write in some text. Weird things you can put in here, and the idea with this is it's to commemorate something, so it's like you're making a little uh, bulletin board, basically. So I went to ESU and I spent some money. Lots of these, you double tap on them, you can get some options. And here I can pick the currency. Let's go with that. An interesting one is calendar. To edit the calendar date, you can take it off of auto and then you can scroll through there to get the one you want. Another really cool one is Map. Uh, it's set for Cupertino which is uh, Apple headquarters but you can zoom out, put it to wherever you want just to show that location on there. You can tap off of it, tap again and you can place a pin somewhere. So uh, this is how you could actually search location. So maybe we'll go Emporia, Kansas, rather than trying to scroll and zoom around. But there, once I've placed that, I can still move around by pinching and zooming. And when I'm in zoom mode, I can tap that pin and I can remove it if I want to. Now once I load this up with a lot of items, I can hold them and drag them around. And that's one thing that's really cool uh, about being able to build your web journal is you can customize a lot of it. Uh, if you don't like where you move something, you can always tap the undo at the top. I'm going to put a couple more pictures in here. Let's go with one. So if I move these pictures back and forth, It'll try and format things for me, but maybe I don't want that. If I just want the robot picture to be above the other picture, I can tap the swapping option at the top. So now as I pick an image, drag it on top of another one, that blue square highlights it. And so it now switches those, and it keeps their sizes positioned the way they were in the original setting. So if I shrink this one, again, you'll be able to see, if I bring it up there, the robot is going to switch places and the robot will get small. Now as I'm looking at these, uh, my page is getting really full, and so I don't want people to have to scroll down because they may not think of it and they'll miss some stuff. Although if we have it in portrait mode, you can see a lot more, so be aware of that and how your viewers may use it. But if I want to add a new page, that's just in the plus option, so I can tell it to add a page. Now I'm on page two. If I tap and hold, if I have a lot of pages to go through, uh, I can pick which one and I can show that page. There are some preset options you can look at. So maybe I want my background to be uh, denim or I want my images to have borders around them. Or with grid size, you can pick the default size when you bring things in. 
Now you're looking at it in edit mode, so you can tap edit, and now you're looking at it in viewer mode. Now if you open a previous one, when you go into it, if you're trying to edit it, you'll tap on some things and nothing will happen. You have to hit edit at the top right, and now we can actually fix things. But when it's in the regular viewer mode, if I tap on an image, it will blow up. So that is one nice thing with it. Now for sharing these, uh, you can put it on the cloud, send it to iTunes so you can access it from other devices that way, or the AirDrop. So it's not like uh, you can make a PDF out of it. Uh, you could you know, make the arrangement, do a screen capture, and publish something that way, but it's just uh, maybe a different visual presentation. It would be cool if you could add hyperlinks or something to make the picture send you somewhere, but that's just not what this does. All right, so next up is Slideshow. So we'll go plus, we'll tell it a slideshow, and it instantly opens up the plus there. If it doesn't, you just hit the plus, and you're able to see your photos, or you could narrow it down to look at things in your album. Now these will load in whatever order you tap on them, so if I'm going out of order, that's exactly how it puts them in. If I want to fix it, I can drag and move them to switch them around, and then I can go back in and keep adding more. If I want, for whatever reason, several slides of the same thing, I can just keep tapping on the same one over and over, and it populates that. If I screwed up, I can hit undo to get rid of all of those that I just added. Now what's pretty interesting is they also have this projects option at the end, so if I made a different slideshow, uh, I can pick the pictures that I used for that one and put them in here, or if I made a web journal, it also tells me which images I used in the web journal. So if you have some pretty common go-to images, it'll kind of keep track of them for you and help you find them a little bit quicker than scrolling through all of your folders. Okay, so once you have your images, you can pick these slideshow options, and you can scroll down to see a, a lot of different ones. Uh, play with the speed there, decide whether or not you want to have music and which music, and they just bring in a whole lot for you. And then we can tap play. And it starts it up. Now we can tap anywhere on here to, if it's going too slowly, to go on to the next video. We miss some of the transition and animation. And the default on these is to loop also. We can tap to get out of it. Now with iMovie, you would be able to adjust the Ken Burns and pick the focus point and do lots of other stuff with it. Uh, in iPhoto, you really can't. It just decides on its own what it's going to focus on. So if you want lots of uh, individual tweak ability, then go with iMovie. If you just want to throw a bunch of stuff and make them go across the screen in a loop, then I would go with iPhoto. Just like with the web journal, you're not sharing it in some other type of application. It's not like you can take this and turn it into a keynote. It just saves the iPhoto project file on iCloud or iTunes, or you can send it to another device to view it. But it's it's not like it turns it into something that it's not. So these are the iPhoto projects that you can make uh, really on the low end as far as what it takes to make them and also on what they can deliver but if you want something quick and easy to show you know just what you did in class that day that's a really good way to do it.